This is the beautiful landscape of West Somerset, stretching from the rugged Quantock Hills over the rural Brendon Hills and across Exmoor to the sea. This area has inspired so many artists and writers over the centuries, one of which is Samuel Taylor Coleridge, a poet and philosopher. Over the next three days, I'm going to take you on a journey following in the poet's footsteps along the 36 mile Coolidge Way. While on day one, our journey will start from Neverstowey and be walking to Bicknoller, a distance of around about nine and a half miles. This is Coolidge Cottage, and Coolidge lived here with his family for around about three years. And the ancient mariner was once called the first and the last. This quiet little Quantock village is steeped in history, going right back to the Anglo-Saxon times. On leaving the village, we'll be passing the remains of a 11th century Moat and Bailey Castle. On our journey, we'll be following the Quillpen Waymarks, which shows the Courage Way route. Not far from here is an old disused quarry where there once stood Wolford's gibbet. This is where John Wolford, a local charcoal burner, was hung back in 1789 for the murder of his wife. His body was left there for a year and a day. Then it was cut down and buried 10 feet under the gibbet. Now on to an open part of the Quantock Hills, with views right out towards the sea, and further over in the distance, although it's a bit misty, is Wales. The footpath behind me leads up to an Iron Age hill fort known as Dowsborough Hills Fort. Well, I'm now going to walk down on the Quantock Greenway, heading down towards the A39. And just to the left of the Greenway is Holford Coombe. In the distance is the little village of Holford, which was once the home for the Huguenot Silk Factory. Back in the Roman times, they also occupied this village, and Roman coins have been found in the area. Well, here are the remains of the Huguenot Silk Factory and old cottages. The site dates back to the 16th century when French Huguenots left France for persecution for their religious beliefs and they settled here in Holford. And you may recognise the scenery for in 1991 part of this area was filmed for the Brian Adams hit Everything I Do I Do It For You which featured in the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves film. This little building is a dog pound and it was built following a gruesome incident when the local hounds were kept in the area and the huntsmen kept fresh meat hung in trees to feed them. Unfortunately this attracted the attention of local stray dogs and on numerous occasions they created a lot of noise which upset the hounds. And unfortunately one night a huntsman went down to investigate, didn't wear his usual hunting clothes. The hounds unfortunately killed him not knowing who he was. Our route goes through the grounds of the Al Foxton House Hotel and back in Coleridge's day his good friend William Wordsworth and his wife Dorothy stayed at Al Foxton House. Well this beautiful route through the Quantock Greenway is up and down through various combes 
and we're now heading down towards Perico. Well, day one is shortly coming to a close. We're almost completed our walk down towards the village of Bicknola. The journey today has been around about nine and a half miles, perhaps a little bit more. And we'll be starting here again tomorrow morning when I'll be walking from Bicknola to Luxborough, a distance of around about 13 and a half miles. So I hope you join me then. Well hello and welcome again to the Cool Ridge Way. This is my second day along this trip and I'm now leaving the Quantox behind. I've just left Bicknola to the wonderful sound of a thrush singing and today I'm heading over towards the Brendan Hills to Luxborough and a different change of scenery I think. Uh, distance of around about 13 and a half miles today. We're now about to cross the railway line. Now this is the West Somerset Railway. Now they do lovely trips from uh, Bishop's Lydia to Minehead on a regular basis uh, with steam trains. I think it's a bit early to see one at the moment. This particular section of woodland has been quite pleasant. Slight uphill gradient, but uh, very ivy clad, very wild looking really. Well, one small coin, and it says on here, in ancient times it was considered prudent for travellers about to across a wooden bridge to make an offering to the spirits of the trees, which were cut to provide the timber. Unless a thief or destitute person has taken it, you'll find a small, small coin on one of the pillars. Please carry it across on an open palm and place it on the pillar on the opposite side so that the next traveller may use it to cross in safety. If all the coins have been taken, you may wish to leave a small token to those who come after you. Well, may you travel tranquility and arrive restored. That's nice. So, on the open palm it goes. There we go, place it on there for the next traveller. Walk along this uh, particular woodland section, you'll see various holes with lots of sand been pulled out of them. This is normally a badger set. We're walking through this beautiful landscape today, which is heavily agricultural. You wouldn't believe that around about the 1850s, it was subject to high mining activity. 
the West Somerset Mineral Ra Railway, which ran from Watchet Harbour up towards the Brendan Hills, was started by the Brendan Hills Iron Ore Company. Iron ore was mined high up into Brendan Hills and then transported down to Watchet and then again transported by sea over to Wales where it was then used. Monk Silver is a little village which is three miles west of the town of Willerton in Somerset. It's on the eastern flank of the Brendan Hills and is obviously on the Coleridge Way footpath. The name of the village means Monk's Wood. The parish was a centre for cloth making in the 16th and 17th centuries. The Brendan Hills actually merge into the eastern side of Exmoor and they are also included in the Exmoor National Park. The highest point on the hills is Lype Hill at 1,388 feet. That's 423 metres above the sea level. I'm now walking up a bridleway path uphill um, to on the Bird Hill and it's still quite rain like slight drizzle coming through the trees not a lot of uh, growth on the trees at the moment as I said earlier the spring is late this year uh, but the young rabbits are about I just saw some they just saw me as well so they ran into their little hole in the ground Rain's coming in a bit heavier, so time for waterproofs. And uh, I'm now heading towards uh, Rude Water, about two miles. Road Water Village was formerly known as Road and had a mill by 1243. During the 18th and 19th centuries, there were a large number of mills set beside the Washford River. The village has links with the West Somerset Mineral Railway which transported iron ore in the 19th century from the Brendan Hills to watch it on the coast. Well I've now left Roadwater and the Valiant Soldier Pub where I had a lovely plumber's lunch. I recommend the meals there. And I'm now heading towards Luxborough, the final destination today and I'm going on a woodland walk through Langbridge Wood. I've never seen so many buzzards in one go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen buzzards there. Eh? 
Well, I hope you managed to see them on film. They're quite a way off, but I tried to zoom in. 16 buzzers I counted there, in, just in one big swoop. <laughs> so what you call 16 buzzards? Fantastic sight. Just below me, over to the left hand side of this track is Luxborough. This is my final destination of today. And my next day, which is tomorrow, I'll be going back from Luxborough all the way to Porlock over the Exmoor Hills and Open Moorland, so it's a different scenery again. And at the time of walking, Luxborough has a pub and tea room. Well, hello and welcome again to my walk along the Coleridge Way. Today it's my third day along the walk and I've just left Luxborough behind and I'm heading over to Wedding Cross on the last section of the Brendan Hill Walk and from Wedding Cross we'll be heading over Exmoor Hills hopefully the sun will shine for us and we'll be finishing up over in Porlock distance of around about 13 and a half miles Well, just as you leave Luxborough, it's a lovely uphill climb towards some farm tracks and some rather muddy farmland. Bit of an uphill climb here. I just passed through Newcomb Farm. All the cattle are out in the fields with, with the little calves, and the farmyard unfortunately is extremely muddy. So you're likely to get your boots muddy here. very open up here, we might be up here in a rainstorm. Anyway, we cross through this little gate here now and cross the next field. A walk then ascends even higher to the highest point on the Brendan Hills. This is Lipe Hill and on a clear day there are wonderful views but today unfortunately is a little bit foggy. Well it's not long before we start to descend and we're now heading towards Exmoor and we're just below the village of Wedding Cross. Oh, well in this area, we're now sort of close to the Avald Valley. It's just down that road there where Snowdrop Valley is and probably around about February, quite happy to see the snowdrops. And of course if you come this way in the summer months we've got lots of rhododendron bushes and uh, like to be in flower.
and of course we're now on the Exmoor section of the Coleridge Way and we're now going to cross over one of the first streams in the area And after the muddy track through Blackton Woods, you can wash your feet in the stream. Well, all along this walk so far, right from the Quantocks and across the Brendans and now on to Exmoor, you're never far from sheep. The landscape now starts to change from the lovely rural agricultural landscape now to the open moorland and the bracken. And it could be a bit wild and windy up here on Exmoor at certain times of the year. So be prepared for bad weather or sunny weather. Exmoor has been a national park for over 50 years. It straddles West Somerset and North Devon and it has a rich scenery of heather moorland, ancient woods, deep secluded valleys and a spectacular coastline. It's got the Exmoor ponies and the famous red deer. The landscapes and the seascapes are dotted with towns, villages, harbours and resorts full of character and charm and attract visitors from worldwide Whose stretches of Exmoor are owned by the National Trust or are protected as nature reserves? Well, I'm now walking down um, a little path called Mixed Path. I don't know why it's called Mixed Path, but we're heading down into the woods near Brockwell. And from there, I should be heading over towards Weber's Post. Just in the distance is three Exmoor ponies. And here are some young red deer. And what are these some magical figures set in some woodland not far from Horner Village? Hey. I got a feeling that was a slow worm rather than an adder. But be careful because you do get adders around the area as well. well. 
Well, the footpath is now descending through woodland, heading down towards the little village of Horner, where apparently there's a, well, there's a tea room there, whether that'll be open, I don't know. And there are toilets there as well. This area is known as Horner Water. There's a lovely tea room there which I just had cream tea. Well recommended. And ice cream. Take the go on all the way to Porlock now. Eh? This is a little late medieval Packhorse Bridge, which is known as Hackety Wayne Bridge. And there we go, that's the first sign to Porlock I've seen. Three quarters of a mile and we're at the end of the Coolidge Way. That's 36.6 miles of fantastic walking through the Quantock Hills, the Brendan Hills and Exmoor National Park. Absolutely fantastic and a walk that I thoroughly recommend to anybody else. And like following the footsteps of the romantic poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge and this is Porlock this beautiful village set down in a valley is surrounded on three sides by Exmoor and to the north by the Bristol Channel it's famous for its poetry associations Coleridge is said to have written Kubla Khan at a farm three or four miles away in the centre of the village is the church of St Decavans with its unusual shaped spire the top is believed to have been cut off by the devil. Inside the church is a magnificent wagon style roof. And Pollock also has associations with another author, R.D. Blackmore, who wrote the story of Lorna Doon. Well, here I am at the final stage now of my journey across the Quantocks, the Brendan Hills and Exmoor, following the Coolidge Way, all the way from Neverstowie to here, the visitor centre in Pollock. Mm -hmm.